Pop the hood of any car today, and you'll find an engine built with tighter tolerances, higher efficiency, and more complexity than ever before, and alongside it, a growing industry of engine additives, each promising to fix something, protect something, or boost performance. Some of them actually work, but others? They're little more than snake oil, some even harmful enough to wreck your engine if you're not careful. So today we're exposing the truth. 13 engine additives that genuinely work and 5 you should avoid like a cracked head gasket. Let's start with the real heroes, the ones that actually earn their keep under your hood. First, fuel injector cleaners, specifically those with PEA, polyetheramine. P-based cleaners like Chevron Tecron or Redline SI1 actually break down carbon deposits on injectors, valves, and combustion chambers. Used every 5,000 to 10,000 miles, they keep your engine running smoother, especially on direct injection setups. Next up, let's talk about oil additives with molybdenum or ZDDP. These are what we call friction modifiers. Basically, they form this super thin microscopic layer right on the metal surfaces inside your engine, and that helps reduce wear, especially when you're starting up cold. So, if you've got a high mileage engine or maybe an older car that burns a little oil, these additives can be a real lifesaver. Now, engine flushes, yeah, they're kind of controversial, but when you do them right, they can really be effective. Something like Liqui Moly Engine Flush, used right before an oil change, helps get rid of sludge and varnish buildup. The trick is not to leave it in too long, just 5 to 10 minutes with the engine running, then drain it out. Trust me, you'll be shocked at just how black that oil looks when it comes out. Fuel stabilizers, like Stabil, really do the job if you're planning to store a car for a long time. They keep the fuel from breaking down and gumming up your injectors or carburetors, it's honestly perfect for vehicles that are going to sit through the winter or only get used seasonally. Octane boosters, but here's the catch. They must contain MMT or toluene. The cheap ones just add coloring and ethanol. Real boosters raise the octane enough to help prevent knocking in tuned or turbo engines. But don't use them unless your car requires it. More isn't always better. Ceramic-based oil treatments like Zotto or Tribotex. They're expensive, but tests show they can reduce friction, improve compression, and even help aging engines. You won't notice overnight miracles, but long-term, less wear. Diesel fuel system cleaners like Power Service or Hotshot Secret Work, wonders for clogged injectors and water separation, especially on older diesels or biodiesel mixes that tend to leave residue behind. ATF additives like Lubigard Red for automatic transmissions actually help fix shifting issues and restore smooth operation. They're compatible with most fluids and help reduce harsh shifting in aging gearboxes. Coolant additives that raise boilover protection and prevent corrosion like Redline Water Wetter are legit. They help high performance or older engines run cooler and reduce hotspots inside the cooling system. High mileage oil conditioners with seal softeners do work, like Lucas Oil Stabilizer or Valvoline Max Life. They help recondition rubber gaskets and reduce oil leaks in aging engines. Now, they won't reseal a torn gasket, but they'll slow minor seepage. Then there's upper cylinder lubricants, like Marvel Mystery Oil. Old school? Yes. But in small doses it helps keep valve stems and guides cleaner especially in engines running ethanol blended fuels not magic but not a myth either for turbocharged engines some people swear by turbo cleaner sprays that you spray into the intake while the engine runs brands like crc turbo cleaner help dissolve carbon on vanes and sensors without disassembly use with caution but they do work especially on diesels and finally Viscosity modifiers that stabilize oil under extreme heat. These are in products like Royal Purple Max Tain or BGMOA. They don't just thicken oil, they help it retain its film strength under high stress. That's the good stuff. But now let's talk about the bad. The five engine additives you should never trust no matter what the bottle says. 
first up-chlorinated paraffin-based treatments, some old-school additives used chlorine as a friction reducer. It works, temporarily, but it corrodes internal engine parts over time, especially when mixed with modern synthetics. You won't know it until it's too late. Second, stop leak oil additives. Yeah, they do slow leaks, but they also swell seals unnaturally and clog small oil passages. In the long run, they're like putting a band-aid over a bullet hole, especially risky in engines with variable valve timing or turbo oil feeds. Third, thickening additives for oil pressure fixes. Stuff like honey-thick restorers that promise to quiet engine noise by coating internals in goop. Sure, they raise oil pressure, but at the cost of starving top-end components and clogging fine mesh filters. The silence you hear is your camshaft dying. Fourth, engine coatings with metallic particles. Yeah, we're talking about the ones that say they contain zinc, copper, or even Teflon. Teflon doesn't belong in your crankcase. It was designed for frying pans, not engines. These coatings can clog filters and mess with tolerances. And fifth additives that promise like 15% fuel economy boosts or say guaranteed horsepower in a bottle. If that were true, automakers would use them from the factory. They don't, because honestly, they just don't work. At best, these additives do nothing. At worst, they can actually harm sensors or mess with your fuel trims. Here's the truth. Engine additives aren't magic, but you know, some are science-backed, test-proven, and mechanic-approved. Used smartly, they can stretch the life of your engine, restore performance, and save you thousands. But if you use them blindly, they can destroy everything you're trying to protect. So next time you're at the auto parts store holding that shiny little bottle, ask yourself, does this fix the problem or just hide it? If you found this breakdown helpful, hit that like button. It helps get the truth in front of more drivers. Drop a comment and let me know what additive you swear by or which one wrecked your engine. And make sure to subscribe to Gear Specs for brutally honest car advice, DIY guides, and myth-busting breakdowns you won't hear at the shop. Because knowledge isn't just horsepower, it's protection.